into the ether. <laughs> maybe we'll come back. Maybe we won't. Well, maybe not. Good afternoon, everyone. You can hear him uh, chirping around in the background there. <laughs> uh, welcome along to Return at Home with me <clears throat> for another fascinating demo. <laughs> uh, right, I have managed to get Brian and Doug again for to give me a bit of help. Fascinating. There, there, they, fascinating. there they are. How to do. So they'll put any questions to me or anything like that there. So I'll put them as in, in the background. Um, I'll come over to the lathe and explain what I have here. I have a piece of, uh, we're just discussing this piece of wood before we come on. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's the same timber I uh, turned last week with a candlestick. Uh, it's a crotch, as you can see. I'll just bring the overhead over. You can see there's a crotch in it, uh, but it doesn't seem to go down too far, hopefully. So we're going to make some sort of a a bowl. It might be a natural edge on it. I don't know. Uh, I said on the, the thumbnail, it could be textured and maybe a bit of color. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I like I like to change my mind uh, when I start a piece and uh, see what uh, what it tells me so I won't know until I get this crotch uh, this cut over to see how much of a, this here disappears so we'll start with that and we'll take it from her okay so we'll get a bull gouge and we'll just get her to the rest set in the right height okay that's a wee bit high Paul so safety as always, guys, when you're starting your machine up, if you have variable speed, uh, make sure you turn the knob down and you don't uh, turn the lathe on full blast. But this is out of balance. It will be out of balance because of the shape of it. So you won't go, you'll just have to uh, nurse the machine up to an operating speed that uh, it will tell you because it will jump all around the place, uh, vibrating. <laughs> So, uh, safety glasses, dust mask, all those things you should be wearing in your shop. Uh, I do normally um, when I'm on my own. And uh, like I said, the demonstration, I, I wear a face shield now and again at the time, depending on what I'm doing. Okay, so this piece is, it's not very long. I gave it the wrong measurements out last night last week that's eight inches wide or long whatever you want to call it and it's about four inches deep so uh i'll get carrying on with this and the guys can talk away in the background there and tell me who's in and stuff like that okay all right Monty, you you work away there brian you'd like follow. me to name yeah, the you list go ahead. you you go ahead there Doug. let's do that um, we got, uh, of course, Paul and Brian and myself, uh, and then there's uh, Alex, Vinny is in, uh, Todd, Glenn Co. Woodworks is in, Michael is in, YB is in. Hey, YB, I missed you a while ago. Richard is in. That's Andre Copper from Al. With you. Yes. Copper Al Woodturning is in. Malcolm sure, Douglas Rob. is in. And I think I've hit everybody. Richard Phelan. Welcome along, everyone. Richard yes, Richard Phelan. Yes. Short list Welcome right on. now, but I'm sure that's going to grow here momentarily. It will. Yeah. Welcome, guys. So welcome along, everybody. This Monday afternoon. And I'm glad and to see the wires back. changed a wee bit, and it's not cooler, a lot cooler <laughs> in the shed. Uh, it's, a bit, uh, it's a sunny afternoon here down in uh, County Town. Don't know what it's like up with you, Paul. It's nice sort of, sort of, uh, well, it's it's dry. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's dry. It wasn't dry last night, but it was. No, it rained, rained all night. Rain last night. Yep. Yeah, really. Some rain. Oh yeah, horrendous. We've even got my Chris. Oh, Chris. Hey, Brian. I was going to say, even my sand paddock up at the yard is flooded. Just stop that wow. and move yeah. the tool rest then. 
We've got Chris Dodds in. Mark Beckett has dropped in. Hi, Mark. Mark. Hi, Mark. Hmm. Paul Hutton's in. Good evening. Good afternoon, hey, Paul. Paul. Hey, Paul. I'm Roger Bye. Kent. All right, Roger. Well, I did the unthinkable. I looked up Wood Database. No, you didn't. Yeah, I'm afraid I did. What do you think it is? Poly. Uh, well, English hobby, they don't have a picture. Cape Holly, it's it's a little darker. Then they've got Holly, which is mm -hmm. more like what we've got. And there's Home Oak, H O L M Oak, oh, under Holly. I'm not real sure. <sighs> this could be possibly Cape Holly, maybe. I wonder why they don't have a picture of the English holly. I'm just about to find out. Oh, there I'm it is. I'm going to debate about this piece of wood. We don't know what it is. Uh, I turned a piece of this last week, and uh, I just don't know what it is. Uh, it could be. Initially, I thought it was sycamore, but it's not. Uh, and I don't think it's holly. That that's faulted in there doesn't really look like holly, does it? Nope. Huh. Without doing, uh, I don't know. I don't Let's know. Let's to rest around a wee bit. Ooh, look at that feather going through there. Uh, knew that what happened. Uh, camera's pan. Whole lot, whole lot of compression on that tree. Yes, there was. It's funny how that that camera plays up a bit. Yeah. Sometimes it wants to stay on, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be must be a female camera. We've got quite a ways to go to bring this around <laughs> to the top here. So, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Let's see whether they can get the speed up a wee bit. Ooh, right, there's a slight vibration about 900, so we'll just back it off a wee bit, around about 870, there you are. Uh, Richard has said holly is usually very white wood, and yes, you're exactly right, Richard. Yeah. But once it ages a little bit, it starts taking on color. Uh, and if you if you store it horizontally, it'll turn pretty gray. Um, that's what's throwing us off. We just don't know. This piece has been around a while. Yeah, I just, I just uh, looked up the pictures for uh, English, English holly bark. Uh, it doesn't look like what we're looking at. It's really dark. Uh, has a dark layer to that, the bark that's on this piece. Right. Not sure what it is. I thought Richard might know just by looking at the bark. Which is pretty good with identifying timber. Mm -hmm. Just check, just check out Chuck's nice and tight and slowing down a wee bit there. Just loose. Okay. So, yeah, and the crash is coming down okay. Uh, um, well, it might be leavening in, in the bottom. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
Right. That's a that's a twenty pound inclusion then. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I've got a big piece of U that's going to end up like that, and it's going to have a hole in the bottom because it's just the mm. shape. Of that sounds promising. Mm -hmm. It does, but it's in the it's in the drying phase at the minute, so it can sit there for a while yet. Yeah. Jennifer's Crafting Creations has just joined us. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, hey, Jennifer. Jennifer. Professor Rob. Good afternoon, Rob and Jennifer. Just having, having our wee look. Coming up to the top here. Quite a ways to go there. So it'll reduce the height of this, the width of this. Uh, some. Wow, that oh. that uh, that void in the crotch there goes a lot deeper than it looked like it did from the beginning. It does. It it has indeed. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing for tomorrow night. Oh, oh no. What are you doing tonight, Brian? I'm not doing anything. It's the three three sixty. Oh, club. that's right. That's right. I forget 360. that. Three sixty club tonight. I may have to uh, start working on my Hampshire Sheen finishing course this afternoon. No, that's a good plan. And I may even jump in with that. You know, you get one free month. Oh, you do. Yeah. Well, that's correct. So you do. I may, I may jump in on that. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. If not, why not? You'd be welcome, Doug. That is uh, heading straight towards the middle. Now. Oh, Jennifer's oh. asking how, how Michelle and Matthew are doing, uh, and me, of course. Uh, we're doing very well, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. We're all good. Mm, I was hoping to keep most of that. But Alex says, it. looks like we've got a storm brewing. Well, we had, the, we had a whole lot of rain last night, so and it was heading in your direction, Rob, so, or Alex, should I say. Next week's going to be more interesting, I think, the weather. It would appear that we're going to get weather coming from Canada, which was a remnant of a hurricane. Hurricane Lee or something, was it? It's coming our direction next. We got a little rain shower is all we got from that. But that storm's gone back across the water and picked yeah. up a bunch now, so you guys may get some. Yeah, well, it, uh, it came across Lewis, and Lewis uh, said it was, it was heavy, and he's, he said his corn stalks were taking a bit of a beating. <laughs> sure. He said it was quite windy, and there's lots of rain with it. Yeah. Our corn, our corn stalks have all been cut down now. I know it's uh, um, just been caught up in the Gulf Stream that's heading towards us, isn't it? Right. So I'm just taking a bit more timber off the bottom of this. Mm hmm. And it. You're trying to get down a bit solid there, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Alex says, uh, cheers, Brian. I'm just waiting for the next branch to come off the big tree across the road. <laughs> and, you're, and you'll be out like a shot, Alex. <laughs> oh, my. Have chainsaw, we'll travel. <laughs> Place where we went on vacation this past spring, there was a big, big oak tree that had a massive uh, burl on it. And I kept thinking, I, electric chainsaws are not that expensive. I yeah, and, and not that, that noisy. 
<laughs> uh, they'd be on me like oh, yeah. on rice. It'd be bad. It'd be all over you like a rush. That inclusion is so, uh, great. <laughs> yeah, is it heading straight into your dinner? Right, let's see if I can. I don't know if this but, uh, live edge will stay on. Uh, uh, this bit of tour right here. Uh, I'm going to try and maybe tidy it up a wee bit. See if I can manage to get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite yet. Sometimes hard to get it to stay on. And it depends when the tree was cut down, of course. Oh, right on. Rob says it's uh, stair rodding it down here and I'm soaked. Oh, get out of the rain, Rob. What are you doing? Supposed to go inside when it rains, aren't you? Uh, Jennifer said the thunderstorm really frightened me last night. It sounded like a plane was crashing. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness me. I know lots of people who are afraid of thunder and lightning. Or maybe not so, uh, afraid of it so much, but certainly don't like it. <laughs> it's just a wee bit. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> Todd, it's too early for that. <laughs> you guys are afternoon. I'm I'm in the morning still. It's ah, you, you're early morning yet. Yeah. So have is you Todd. Had your, <laughs> have you had your coffee yet, Doug? I've had one cup. I'm I'm oh. just thinking about going up real quick and getting another one. Right, I got it. So we'll just try it. and get a, a clean cut on that. Yeah, I got it. Good night. Yeah. I had to bring it around more of a curve. See ya. On it's going to look nice, top. though. I hope it's sloping an inward sloping rim then, by the looks of it. <laughs> you can hear that in the inclusion there, can't you? Yeah. It's a beautiful oh. morning in Texas. The Seculs has been in months. Just wonderful, says Tom. That's that's why he's a little frisky this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. It's cooler here than what it has been. Uh, was yesterday as well. Got up in the oh, woke up to it being in the in the upper sixties today. Wow. <laughs> Clint says I don't like lightning. Two of my cousins were struck and killed with it when I was twelve. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's terrible. That is terrible, right? Oh, Todd's head oh, for the mountains. That'll be that'll be a nice treat for you. Mm -hmm. I spent four weeks one summer, um, and then four years later, spent three months in, in Pagosa Springs, which is up in the mountains in Colorado. Yeah. Not far from, uh, it's not far from the border with Utah. Yeah. Twisted Pete of the Trees is in. Hey, Hi, Pete. Pete. Hi, Pete. Welcome good along, morning. buddy. Good morning. He jokingly says good morning. I seriously say good morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that lightning stuff is nothing to play with for sure. Nope. Man, just that's an interesting of, looking piece of wood. There's a, a wee bit of a bump here, so I'm just trying to smooth oh, it right. Todd says he'll be passing through because of springs towards the end of his trip. Down through because of springs and up over Wolf Creek Pass. All right. That's a scary hill. I have to say. That was the first road I encountered um, in my lifetime that they had to have truck runoffs on it. Yeah, yeah. 
there's a not as many and they're not as uh, not as necessary but they have them in the the uh, smoky mountains as well mm -hmm. uh, all up and down that appalachian ridge <clears throat> it's uh pretty interesting it's okay driving a car or something but if you're driving a big heavy lorry or, or that could a be truck, scary yeah a truck with a, a horse trailer in the back or something yeah scary enough i would think yep but they do it all the time. So indeed, indeed. Yeah. Okay. Just and clean that up now. We had a girl we had a girl arrived at the, in the campus in Colorado in Pagosa Springs where I did the horsemanship thing. Oh, okay. And the, and she had absolutely she had no brakes left on her trailer whatsoever. None whatsoever. Burnt out completely. Yeah. Todd says what's scary is when you see those uh, runoff ramps actually used yeah even scarier when you see two in there already <laughs> oh no <laughs> not just one but two yeah i've seen that here in the smokies um it's it's a strange sight strange sight it, it is thankfully i've only ever seen that on, on the likes of youtube or something right i never actually or, seen anybody going into one there's a there have been a couple of movies that came out with with those things being used. Mm. Ever since I saw the first one, I can't remember the name of it now. I've always thought I'd like to drive into one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no thanks. Not as an emergency, but just to just, just to see how quick they do stop. They stop it's them pretty quick. Recutting that tannin oh, again, because. Yeah. Why? It was, uh, it still had some bark in it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good. No thing. good. <laughs> no good. Kind of needs to be on kind of reasonably good wood. Sure does. All right. Todd's going to be up my way celebrating his uncle's 90th birthday in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. That's just, just a hop and a skip and a jump for me. Real close. There you go. So just using the, the angle on the skew to give me a slight dovetail on this. And just speaking, let's see where that bottom is okay. Yeah, that'll be all right for to sit on. So that will be the bottom of the the piece. So, this is this is going to be a nice piece, Paul. <laughs> I'm already mm -hmm. seeing it. Very nice. I told you doing a bit of traveling recently, and, and now it's coming. Yeah, why well, isn't he going from out west to all the way over here and? Yeah, that's a good bit of travel. Just changing over the spindle, guys. Nice fresh cut on it. To just clean that up here. A couple of wee lines in it before I sand it. I'm hoping that was my screen that uh, froze there and not Paul's. Yeah. I I didn't see Paul's move at all. It's doing exactly well, I, right. I seem I seem to be okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, to, has to be at my end then. Okay, I just go and put that it, just extractor on before I forgot to uh, do that when it came out. <clears throat> that'll be that'll be BT making promises they can't keep again. Uh, I was about to say, didn't you? You got on fiber optic, did you? Oh yeah, I'm on fiber optic, and I'm supposed to be getting 900 yeah. megabits down. But... There's a. You may have the same problem I had. They had to come out and fix mine the other day. Found there was a kink in the line coming into huh. the house, um, and, which is fine at first. Does slow mm. down the light transmission a little bit, but I was getting real good real good speeds but that kink will eventually just break and it did well i'm, sp I'm guaranteed a minimum of 700 dane is what the guarantee oh. is 
Are you getting it's it? Currently, it's currently at 280. Oh, my. Yep, yep. So you need to... So phone call to BT. Yep. Okay, so Todd's got a, his trip's going to be about 2,700 miles. Wow. He's already bought a new set of tires, and it cost him an arm and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe two arms. Tires yeah. here have gotten stupid expensive. And I know things have changed. Inflation has been rampant ever since. But what was it? Uh, 30 years ago, I was selling tires. And the best tire we sold was just barely over $100. And I hated to even mention them to, to our customers. I know. And now you can't buy a tire for $100. A cheap tire is $100. Nah, it isn't. It is. Of course, I, I remember saying when I was a teenager, when gas goes up to a dollar a gallon, I'm going to get a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and when did you get your horse? <laughs> well, I backed off. I backed yeah. off. Yeah. We lived, we lived in a big city at that point. Oh, well, we lived in Louisville, Kentucky at that point, and there was no place to, to keep a horse. It's no cheaper, let me assure you. <laughs> My wife keeps saying, "I, oh my goodness, Todd, oh you're hurting me, buddy. Oh my soul hurts. Eleven hundred dollars for Honda Pilot tires. Those are Michelin's. They're good. Those are good tires, but still eleven hundred dollars. Wow. Oh. Set of four tires. Wow. Maybe five. I don't know. Maybe about five spare as well. I don't know. Yeah. Well." My wife Gee. keeps saying she wants a horse so bad, and I keep saying, you, you don't have any clue what it costs to keep a horse up. Nope. Um, she, she get afraid the first vet bill that comes in, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if she's going to shoe a horse, it'll cost her, I don't know, 60 or 70 dollars to get a horse shoed these days, I would think. Maybe a bit more. And that happens every six weeks. Wow. What's your dear? And the four legs, so that's four shoes. Yep. 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 Don't need a spare even. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that looks nice. Ooh. So Jennifer says she's only ever turned pens, really, and two bowls with Mark's help. But this week, Mark's off work. Well, this week, uh, well, Mark is at work. I'm going to learn to turn some bowls. Mark has just bought me two new carbide tools. Ooh, very good. Mark's far too nice to you. Sometimes, Jennifer, that's, that's the best way to get into it when nobody else is around, just... Just go in, and, and if you make a mistake, you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Just have a play. Yeah. Just be safe. Pete asked Pete's... a question of you, Brian. Hey, yeah, I see that. The question, is it cheaper to put tires on a horse? Um, <laughs> that, that's, a, that, that's a strange thing. I actually do have um, boots you can put in a horse. Just the bottom look a bit like tires. You're quite right, Pete. Right. You can get boots for horses. They came from America. A company called Scoot Boot. They uh, they make like strap-on trainers for for horses. Yeah. And the, Our, the ones the ones from the, the yeah, sort of originated in the UK were big clump clumsy cumbersome things. But yeah, just like tires strapped on the bottom of a horse's head. Hmm. And they're removable, so you only need to put them on when you're taking them out on hard ground. Right. They're a great thing for transitioning a horse from. Uh, Wearing shoes to not wearing shoes, because horses never don't need to wear shoes at all. Right. No matter where they live, they don't need to wear shoes. The Houston P Police Department, uh, they are, none of their horses wear shoes. Hmm. And they're, so we're they're up to three twenty in the sandpaper. Mm -hmm. So just one more to go, and then uh, good. 
Don't give it a wee bit of... Is this timber still a bit? Is this timber still a wee bit wet? Uh, no, it looks no, wet, dry. but it's not. That seems to go right and deep in there, Brian. See there? It Just does, there. yeah. It's going right, it's right into the middle. If you look at the, it's, the it's shadow go, on it, it's going to come out in your side. Oh, it certainly is, and I'd be worried about that bowl holding together. To be honest. If you, look at right. the, if, you, if you look at the shadow mark on your tenon there, was it the inclusion of yeah, the tenon goes yeah. right to the middle? Yeah, right on into the middle of your tenon. Uh, just just there, you can see a wee bit of it. Mm. Well, well, just be careful. Yep, you will. And it's, and it's good that it's a tenon rather than a recess, too. That, well, if it had it been a again. recess, you're, you're forcing a timber apart, so exactly. it probably would break. That's it's where a, they came from. That, that's exactly where they came from, Pete. That's where boots came from in the beginning. Dray horses used to have leather boots for pulling the drays up cobbled hills uh, because the steel shoes wouldn't wouldn't hack it. Is that is a dray horse? Is that what we would call a draft horse? Yes. Okay. The horse, or uh, any horse that pulls a cart would be a right. would be a dray horse. Okay. So a dray is it basically was a, a, a type of cart. Okay. A draft horse, basically. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Just pouring some in the, the cracker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking a little bit super glue down in there, might and dart. <laughs> Why didn't you see that earlier before I put the sun sealer in? <laughs> Yeah, Pete says the inclusion needs to be slap bang in the middle of the jaw, and that's mm -hmm. how you get, and that's how you get away with the split. That's how he yep. got away with the split. You boy did the other week, so make sure it's okay. Oh, it's getting well compressed. Absolutely. And just to be clear, Pete, you're talking about between two of the jaws. Yeah, not the she's avoiding the space. Or... Right. No, yep, no, I, that's exactly what I would do. So just to be test your Yorkshire right. Um Turn it mm -hmm. up. I'm not that sure that's looking what... good. Go ahead, Brian. I'm not sure that's what Pete means. I think it needs to be in the middle of the age or okay. So, All right. So, so is there still holding it on either side? Not not just in, in the gap between two jaws. If you leave it like that, I think that's that's nothing. That's the, the wrong way to go. I would put it Slap by in the middle of the quadrant of the jaw. Yeah. So pushing that section of the tenon in toward the center. Okay. When you think about it, it makes sense. <clears throat> so you've got steel brace on either side, but rather than just try to clamp it, uh, clamp the thing together, if you know what I mean. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Center of the jaw itself is what. Yeah. So, there's, yeah. so there's an even pressure on there. That's, that's... Yeah. Yeah. That's where you'll get your best mechanical advantage, I would think. And I'll just give that a wee taste of wax. Looks nice. I like that. Uh, whatever that colouring is on this, on this, on the end grain there. I like mm -hmm. that. Color. Like spalting yep. starting or whatever that is. Definitely it looks spalting. nice. That, uh... No. Oh dear. Just got. Is that is that the pith running through the middle of that bit, Paul? Is it? Yeah, there he is. Is that where the, radio, where the radio marks are coming out of? 
camp. It was right really nice, huh? there. Yeah, I'm starting to think that's my There's a wee bit there. There's been sea branches coming out of that somewhere. Mm -hmm. One, yes. two, three. Yeah. Right. I'll give that a wee buff up. That could be magnolia. Could be. Could be. With a bit of salting and maybe a little staining it. There's Just be nice. careful of the fingers when you're are you doing a natural <laughs> edge thing? Because this yeah, is not absolutely. truly round near the top and you'll get a bit of thumping going on on the whole hands. Yep. The problem with my magnolia projects, I usually colour them all. <laughs> I'm looking for a bit of magnolia in here. Right, okay. That'll do that. I just want to take a Norway cut off that tannin on the face of it. It looks a wee bit big. I've got one piece of magnolia. Mm -hmm. That is extremely possible. It is magnolia because I've got a piece in my hand. Yep. And I'm looking at a piece at a picture of southern magnolia on the wood database mm -hmm. that is a lot more that color. I bet you, yeah, I think you're on to something there, Brian. I'll show you Just this. I'll show you bringing this the two rest up uh, to mark my center hole for when I go to took the food off. Oh, okay. if we could all remember to do that. That's, a, that's such a simple <laughs> thing. I know. I forget it, all it, the time. I do too. It so helps. It, oh, helps. Yeah, it helps. Yeah, if you can do that, especially on a piece like this. You go to reverse it that second time. If it's not there, it can take forever to get it lined up. If it's there, don't forget put that. Include just bring one of those chairs. Two the rest up. They give me a wee bit of support when I. All right, that's in the middle. So the cracks running. Yeah. You can see it here. I'm just going to yep. move it around a wee bit. Good right in the middle of the jaw. Good lad. And, and just bring the tail stock up, making sure it's tight against the, the base. <laughs> okay. So we're in. We'll see how this performs now. Let's see. That's pretty that's good. good. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> P says, I was just thinking Magnolia is always black, blue, red, or a combination of them with dots on it if Brian is in that sort of mood. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of, it just kind of, yeah. I'm just going to give Absolutely. this a quick sharpen again. <clears throat> well, and, and usually has a whole lot of texture and stuff on it as well. Yeah. Yeah. The house I lived in before I moved to this one had a very big magnolia tree in front of it we had a major ice storm come through one year and broke the back third off of that tree it was all laying mm -hmm. right in the yard just as pretty as you please didn't hurt a thing so i cut it up and everything big i saved for my uh wood my turning pile and i turned one piece of it green and it's uh, i've still got it it's uh, it's a very it was a fun wood to turn green. Got it really thin. Um, in fact, the bottom of it, I came within an ace of getting it too thin. There's still wood there, but it's hard to see. It's so thin. <laughs> see, it's got a see-through bottom, has it? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there's just a little, little tiny place. Um, like I said, there is wood there. There's there are wood fibers there that I did not cut out. But the bowl itself is, uh, it's tiny. <laughs> nice big wings on it. And they, they cause it was green, it twisted. Uh-oh. That's pulls in the way of the camera. Oh, okay. Shoo. Thought we lost All right. it. But it's good. Just I'll move it over there. We bet. Number needs to go to the right a bit more, yeah. 
It's just when my shoulder goes over there. And it, uh, yeah, it's... yeah. You're fine. I have a camera that sits at 45 degrees to the uh, spindle. Ah, yeah. To the, if you're looking from the tailstock end, 45 degrees to the right, and it can, then it stops you getting in the way of the camera. Right, that's huh. cool. There's the inclusion. Not yet, no sign of it yet. <clears throat> uh, I think there is. I think there is. Todd saying magnolias are nice, but the na the neighbor's trees always seem to blow into my yard. <laughs> oh. You're ex the leaves are are. Is crazy. magnolia the one with the white flowers? That's yes. correct. That, 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 that white is, flowers. It is magnolia then. There you go. It's, de okay. it's definitely real because I've got a piece of my hand and it's identical to what you're talking. Yep. But you know yep. where where I got it from? I'd, I'd seen the trees flowering, and there was white and like a pinkish ones. Okay. So, yeah, and big usually heavy, a white, usually big a big heavy white leaves. flower. Yeah, and yeah. The, the flowers come before the leaves yeah. in the springtime. So you get flowers first and then leaves on magnolia There's trees. There's that inclusion there, Brian. You can just yep. see it coming, yeah. mm -hmm. starting to come through. But it's it's not a crack yet. It's just a dark spot. That's okay. So, yep. uh, oh, make make it away with us. All right. Sure, it makes a ton of more exciting. As long as you're wearing a face shield when you get a bit closer, you're about right. <laughs> sure is cutting nice, I know that. Cuts really nice when it's a bit damp too. <laughs> I'm getting a, getting a wee bit of a Getting the catch. Yeah. yeah, a wee bit of catching there. Well, it's not it's not even showing through. Oh it is. Oh it is. It's uh, just catching uh, uh -huh. just catch. Right. I wanna it's bring this showing through. I wanna bring this uh side down uh down a bit thing there. So we'll do it now before I take any more timber away from the center. Yes. Mm. Keep the uh keep the strength in the wood. Todd has said in the grenades, talking about the magnolias, he thinks that's where the flowers are attached. It is. Clint comes right behind and says, and then the stupid seed pods, that's those grenades. Yep. You step on them, they don't feel real good. They are hard. <laughs> the stupid seed pods that chew your feet. <laughs> yep, yep. And then I've got a tulip popper in my yard now. And that thing's oh not, not a tulip popper. The... Uh, I don't think I'll go any further than that. I uh, think that's thin enough, yeah. It looks pretty you go good. Much you'll lose the side. Yeah, I'll I'll lose this one. Mm -hmm. You will. The thing about uh, trying to do a uh, natural edge is to try and center your piece of wood on mm -hmm. such a way that you're going to get the same distance here and here. Because yeah. if you mount it off center, it, it'll take away one and Natural edge side, you know, you will. if it's not centered. <clears throat> right, so we'll take some of this away. So we'll say we've got a, my neighbor's got a gum tree, it drops those gum balls, that, those little spiky seed, bod, seed balls. Mm. Those are a, a pain in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He hates those things in his yard, so he he rakes them, he vacuums them, he does all kind of strange things. Yeah. Yeah. Todd, we're thinking alike here, bud. You, you know what this area is like. <laughs> <clears throat> it's getting a bit windy outside my house at the moment. Ooh, look uh -oh. at that. Ooh. A little more weather coming in, eh? Yep, here or so. Well, it's supposed to be a deluge tomorrow. Oops. Mm. I knew that went past the center. Yeah, it's um, went past the center, but it's not breaking yet here on this side. It's just about here. Mm -hmm. but, it uh, will. It will. Right, well, we'll play on, as man says. Well, well you, may, you may want to stop and, and, and put some super glue down in that now. Wouldn't be the worst idea. 
Right, I'll do that in a wee second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just come across the bottom, see how far across it is. <laughs> and, and get, and if you're if you're in America, you get you get your catcher mat on. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right. Let's see. Oh, there's an arm. <coughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I, knew that was, I knew that was going to be like that. Right. We'll get a wee taste of glue on it. I, I think so. Un unscrew, your brand, chuck, I? unscrew your chuck a wee bit and put some super glue in it. We'll just uh, we'll do that. <laughs> I was, going to say, I was going to say leave it in the chuck, unscrew the chuck. Uh, I mean, I've just loosened that a wee bit. Uh, it'll be all right. Okay. Well. For sake, see, see these glue balls? You can never, you never get the lid off it. <laughs> That's because you don't wipe it. You don't wipe it before you close it. I did. I, I did wipe it, uh, and I didn't purposely uh, knock it over or anything or for the glue to. That's funny. That's why I have to do every time too, Paul. Mm. I just forget. Oh dear. Get the players right. Pete, will a knockout bar not knock that? Pete Jamed said he jammed chuck. the Jacob's chuck into the tailstock. Uh, knockout oh. bar ought to take it out. Should. He's maybe just got a. What are you telling me? You've got a hot Pete. <laughs> Wesley Hannah's in. Hey, Wesley. Hi, Wesley. Hey, Wesley. Early everybody. this morning. I'm just going to just weep a wee bit of paper over this so that it doesn't go all over the place. Well, well I didn't mean to do that. Like, no, you're, well, I kind of knew you didn't. You, that that inclusion lines straight up with your I think it's your two there I believe that's what I saw yeah but your eyes are much better than mine I can't see that well I looked at it earlier yeah well that's two yeah oh, okay do -do 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 -do. I just don't want the, the glue going all over the Running down into anything, yeah. Todd mentioned putting those uh, gumballs in some resin to turn. That is a beautiful turning. I've seen several of those. It, my only issue is I don't do resin, so um, yeah, yeah oh, a little no, tough. You, you, <laughs> what, what I. I was going to say you you been better putting that in from the inside. That's. I don't think it'll go in from the inside. Well, it's not wide it's enough. Done. That's kind of why. What did you get the uh, take the chuck off, stand it up, right, and then well, just well, and then just yeah, well, from going in the crack because you well, put sanding if... sealer in there as well. You see, I know. That's why I thought do it from the inside would be better. Ow. At least uh -huh. we get we get as far down as the sanding sealer. That's what I would do anyway. Mm-hmm. You see, I don't do a lot of it's stuff like with holes piece, in it. Piece, and piece been doing a three-inch hole ten inches deep, and it got a bit warm. Yeah, not a bit wonder, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pete says, uh, "Send, send it to Brian, Doug. He has lots of resin to use up." <laughs> I do actually. <laughs> I do. I do. Oh. But, <laughs> My wife keeps hinting she wants she wants some sunflowers done oh, up yeah. in, in resin. Well, and so just, if uh, if, just if she it. wants, I told her if she wants to turn loose of some money and, and buy the resin, I'll do them. I've got the pressure pot and everything. No, oh, resin's just, expensive, isn't it? Yeah, the resin yeah. itself. That's you can get everything you need for resin casting uh, that you need, except for the resin. And the resin will cost more than the stinking rest of it. Yep. I came across a video on YouTube, and the gal, the guy was making a big uh, resin uh, pour, and he actually set the the 
the bucket in the freezer <laughs> to keep it cool, okay. you know, to right. stop it from overeating. Right. Oh, I did. Okay. Wow. So it wouldn't crack. Did that, uh, right, did that see you disappear? Uh, not really. Right into your crack. Come up it. It's, see, it's not really deep enough. If I were to go down, and I'm pushing it down with my finger here. And I'll spray it with an accelerator. But you don't stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> that finger will be coated right pretty good. Is that, uh, was that thin CA you used there? Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what is that? No, that's, that's a meter bond adhesive. It's right in thickish. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have the, the, the star, not, not star bond, O3 adhesives. And the thin is, is really thin. And it does, it, if you put it into an inclusion like that, it seeps yeah, its way down in. So I don't, I don't use thin. the, I, I don't use the accelerator and just let it, let it drizzle itself right away down in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it kind of sets them. Right, where are we? We'll see how it goes. That was on two. Mm -hmm. Squeezed up in the chuck. And Should be fine. It's, I don't know, everybody may understand, but just in case somebody doesn't know, uh, the reason why Paul continues to line that chuck up with, with jaw number, or not the chuck, the crack with jaw number two is so it's in the same line as it was. Um, stands less see. chance of being having a wobble in it. I'm just going to give us a wee spin, see if any glue play out. I don't want to get. A little face over it. And the reason the reason we do that is because uh, timbers um, have different densities on on the on the circumference, if you like. They have a different density. So if mm -hmm. you squeeze your jaws up, one of the jaws might just be slightly further in than the other. Right. Just because the different compression rates of the timber. So if you can put it back in exactly the same place every time, it's liable to be good. Yeah. Well, that seems to be okay. I'll just need to clean that face up again. Or I would some I would sometimes uh, mark the gap between the jaws on a piece if I'm taking it off the chuck. Yes, yes. Uh, and then mark the chuck as well, because my the, the, the record, the Robert Sorby chuck, doesn't have any numbers on it. Yeah. Um, I understand a lot of them are doing that now. Uh, mm. <laughs> there, there, some different manufacturing process of those jaws, so they don't need to number them. Right. Let's check out the cameras. Okay, I'll bring, bring it over a wee bit because I'm going to have to get down and round to get this. That's okay, Paul. We've got the other camera. We can always see from there. Okay. <laughs> Alex, you just said I like the cheap and nasty thin stuff. It runs everywhere. It Sometimes does, yeah. that's what you need. <laughs> yep. Particularly for 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 trying to get an inclusion. All right. So, so I'm just back in the speed down. I was running at thirteen hundred. I'm going to run it down to eleven. And in case it does uh, decide yeah. to fly apart. Even eight or nine hundred wouldn't do any harm. It's only a wee small piece. You don't need to be, doesn't need to be flying right. I think it will stay together. Yeah, I think it will too. Just taking later cuts. Mm hmm. That's always quite a good heavy. plan, anyway. Big later cuts. It's, it's still quite heavy in the bottom here. I uh, have about okay. an inch or so of timber to kick take down, or maybe an inch, half inch to take off this bottom. We'll see how this. Inclusion opens up. I'm going to take this wee center bit away. Okay. <laughs> it certainly makes that interesting tunneling when you've got an inclusion or something. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, the pucker factor can get a little, yeah. little intense. <laughs> Probably watching Formula One for the crashes. <laughs> mm. Some good ones at the weekend. 
still getting really good shavings coming out of there. That's mm -hmm. yeah, indeed. That's promising. And it's not banging and thumping either, so. It's not banging and thumping. And no, yeah, not too bad. Oh my, look at that feather. Yeah, it has a nice feather effect on it. It's lovely. Still I would be I'd, I, I would be coloring that. Yeah, take it out. It'll be all right, Paul. Go for it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> we we, we end was, up with a bowl in two halves. It was firewood before. It can be firewood again. <laughs> Oh, the bowl of two I, I I just made the fatal mistake. I looked down. Oh no! Yeah, my my floor is horrible right now. Why? It's got an extra layer on it. Ah, uh, lazy so and so. You mean you never cleaned up after your last turning? Is that what you're telling me? Um, I'm seeing at least three <laughs> different colors of shavings. Ah, oh, gee, Doug. I've got brown, I've got yeah, yellow, grace. and oh. a gray. <laughs> <laughs> door 60's turned... in. Hey, door. Right on date. Right on date. I've, I've turned a couple of maple plates and, and something else in between. <laughs> um, I was, uh, I was uh, chatting to William yesterday and I was turning. And uh, it was time to come in for dinner, and I said to him, I'll leave that there, um, and I'll come back out after tea to, to uh, clean that up. And I thought, no, I can't do that. <laughs> so, I, so I had to clean it first. Yeah. I, <clears throat> that seems to be a, a personality Skin. thing. Mm -hmm. I take after my maternal grandfather. He He kept two or three inches of shavings on the floor. I can't be doing that. I, so we're I, I, somewhere I, here, guys, I, just yeah. there. So I'll take a couple of fan cuts and try and clean this up. I don't how think I want to go any deeper. How you think of the right. walls? <laughs> well, you can see the walls are the same as that, but down right. the bottom, it's a wee bit thicker. Uh, I still well, have to take a wee bit of timber off that. It's quite uh, yeah. steep sided as well, so you want a bit of weight in the bottom as well. To... Oh, I can see daylight through. Uh, oh, to that. I can't believe that, can you? Shine a torch yeah. on it. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. Yeah, I, nice. would, I would be, I would tend to clean that up and be, and call it good. That's yeah, well. and, just, and just say that the, the extra weight in the bottom is just to balance the bowl up. That's exactly right. When it I comes to these. Some... Pots here. Alex, that is shocking. He says it sounds, sounds like me, Doug. When I'm six inches too high for the lathe, it's time to clean up. Yeah, I don't it's let it get that bad. I don't uh, let it don't, get that bad. I don't let it get bad at all. I sometimes clean up halfway. So I was turning yesterday and I turned the inside of a bowl and I sprayed it with sanding sealer. And by the time the sanding sealer was dried, the floor was clean. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to use the rhino scraper here to tidy this up. Oh, I don't think I'm, I can't take it any more off the depth. And no, I it's, wouldn't. It's, I, Doug's, Doug's idea is right there. Just clean it up, call it good. Yeah. There's no, there's no law says it has to be the same um, thickness all the way around, down into the base. Yeah, if if this was a a uh, very uniform, piece. very thin piece, yeah, you'd you'd want it the same. But for something like this, uh, a live edge, I often leave the the bottom a little bit thicker on a live mm -hmm. edge. I leave it. I leave the bottom about a little bit thicker too on like some fruit bowls and stuff. Sure, but particularly wide drum ones, so you, they need a bit of weight in the bottom. Yeah. Stop that. And how we if, was, if it was entering something into a competition, I would make sure it was a, absolutely yeah. thickness was uh, yeah. exact all the way down and round. Yep, that's not too bad. I, I, I'm thinking, get a wee bit more off that. That's 
scooper is working quite efficiently. Something I need to work on, get my scraper resharpened here. Do you have a negative break or just standard? It's a, a standard, uh, just a, a bowl scraper, mm -hmm. that half half round kind of yep. deal. Yep. And I just, I, I get lazy. It, it, you can scrape a lot of times with one, one sharpening and I just get you lazy can. and... And, oh, Gary glasses in. Good afternoon, hey, Gary. Gary. Well, Gary. Are you home, Gary? You must be. It's a bright, blustery day. Well, it could be a bright and blustery where he works as well, of course. But... Just tell you that the wee nub on the bottom. Oh. I take a wee dimple away. There's a wee bit of a dimple. Sometimes the hardest bit to get right in the ball, right in the very ball. I learned from Glenn Lucas that uh, when you're checking the ball, don't just run your finger down to the bottom. Run your finger from one edge and run down to the bottom and back up the other side. Yeah, yeah. You get a better feel for the, the shape of the inside of the ball. Uh, does he talk about doing it fairly, fairly quickly? Not, mm -hmm. not, not, not going dead slow. Just kind of rub your finger, just a, and and down to the bottom and up the other side. Just kind yeah. of a nice, yeah. He didn't, he didn't go really slowly to try and figure it. You know, right. Just, just actually, Harwood talks about that in one of her videos, uh, yeah. going rather quickly across, you know, back and forth several times. Yeah. Um, that way you can feel those irregularities mm -hmm. as they pop up. It's a good thing to do is close your eyes too when you're doing it. Absolutely, yeah. I do that all the time. I have a tool marker. I can't seem to get rid of it. Pete says it's a bit blustery here too. I think it's bits of weather that Lewis rejected. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is, Pete. And there's more coming. Yeah. It's on the old, it's been caught in the jet stream. I said golf stream earlier, I meant jet stream. And caught in the jet stream and it's bringing it straight to us. We bet. He does, Todd. You're quite right. He also he also uses a scraper that's made from a a lorry leaf spring. Yes. Great big thing, yes. About four inches across. I, I said something on one of Zed's uh, video, or uh, he was in a, a chat, I think, and somebody mm -hmm. said something about his scraper. I said about it being a dozer blade. I'd love to have one, but I, there's not that many dozer blades laying around here. <laughs> he says, all you got to <laughs> do is, is spend, I forget what he said now, 120 something thousand dollars to buy yeah. an old dozer. <laughs> yeah, buy a D8 or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's also got one made out of a lawnmower blade. Yeah. But it has a little star fitting in it. It still has a little star fitting in the middle of it. Now, I have great big ones that would used to great big blades that go on this uh, six foot topper thing that I have. You guys would call it a, a bush cutter or something. You guys in America call them. Bush hog? Right. Bush hog. I think that's. It goes, it goes on the back of the tractor. Yeah. As much yeah. as I want to take have, out yeah. of that. It has great big blades on it. So. Yeah. I bet. Uh, I managed to get that quite good at the bottom. He made a good job at the bottom. Well, Dad. Yeah. And it's... And you kind of got past that inclusion, I think, didn't you? On the, on the, yeah, it's the start, starting to go. We look at it. Yeah, I think it's... it's sort of closing down well. again, you know, mm. it's starting to go back on itself. Right, we'll get that sanded up and uh, we'll see what... It's looking good, lies, lies within... Mm -hmm. You may have turned through the worst part of that. Mm, I think he has. Yeah. Doesn't go all the way across anymore, does it? Nope. Nope. Uh, that's nice figure in the bottom of that, too. Yeah. You get bad sand looking, you see uh, and you'll see it. It looks nice. The uh, right. Yeah, the feather is still there along that crack, isn't it? It is a bit. Yeah, I'd be tempted to highlight that with a bit of color or something. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, said uses his lorry scra spring scraper now as his light duty detail scraper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the heavy one is the dozer, and then he has yeah. the the big spring. He's got the uh, lawnmower blade. He's some boy. Gotta say, those are nice scrapers. They eh? they do a great job for him. Mm -hmm. They do, guys. Just be careful, guys, when you're sanding something. I guess you don't go out too far. Or it'll catch. <laughs> mm hmm Just like it will your fingers. <laughs> it's a, it's a, I was just about to say, it's a really good reminder to keep your fingers out of the way, too. Yep. Don't ask me how I know that. Oh, my. Yeah, exactly. Advice yeah. comes from things that have happened to you. Yeah. <laughs> Advice usually comes from experience. We were talking a while ago about the finishing course. I'm sitting here while I'm watching this. I'm doing a little abrasive paste on top of lacquer just to mm -hmm. get that nice, glossy, clear finish on this plate. Mm -hmm. Turned a plate for our uh, virtual club last Wednesday. Put some color on it. It's, it's maple. It's got a little figure in it. And I put some color on it, and uh, it really highlighted the figure. Yeah, just you just like a, a color wash on it rather than a, I like the uh, the stains that come from um, Chasin. Uh huh. That's what I use because, because they can uh, just oh. highlight highlight the grain enough without overpowering the timber. Right. I've got, um, well, when, when Paul gets done, we can, I'll let y'all see it if he, if he wants to let you see it. I've got, uh, I've got some Indian inks as well, which I use and they're quite, they're quite, um, condensed. Um, and I'm practicing and experimenting with using them. Oops. Uh, Using them uh, diluted in water. Ah, okay. Just, just, just to get a color wash on the, on the piece. So I'm uh, experimenting with that in a minute. Does the water See, mix with the Indian ink okay? Does, yeah. Okay. I, th I For whatever reason, I thought Indian inks were based in uh, alcohol. Oh, mine's well. The ones I've got seem to be. No, there's no. I don't think it's alcohol in them. I, I don't think so. There may not. I just I just thought that. I, I don't know why I thought it, but I did. I I I tell you what I did. I used I used some of that Indian ink to dye and and, and I did it in water as well. Um, I dyed some leather. Oh on yeah, that, yeah. On that last little vase thing that I did with the the leather on it on the uh, uh -huh, yeah the texture that had leather. It was. I looked um, really well. You uh, did. Um, where is it? I've lost it. Must be in this shell somewhere. I don't think I sold it. Oh no, there it is. So I dyed the leather to, to a color that I thought would match better. Um, but no, and all I did was I put the Indian ink in, in, a, in a little tray and topped it up with some water and then and, uh, put the leather in it overnight and then left it to dry. Mm -hmm. And it worked a treat. It took, yeah. took up the color really nice. Right. Wesley Hannah's asked a question. He says, what's the secret to using abrasive paste on lacquer? I always seem to get it too hot and mess up the lacquer. <laughs> you want to give that one a shot and then I'll answer if it's different? Well, when I, when I, I, you use Axe paste, I use um, Yorkshire grit. When I use Yorkshire grit on it, it the lathe never goes above 600. And I only ever use Yorkshire grit microfine i don't think you need anything else well, the way i do it is i rub it back with uh four or six hundred grit usually 400 grit because i feel that that's enough and then i use the yorkshire grit on top of that um but don't let the lathe spin too fast that's a great answer that's a great um answer. Uh, brian is exactly right 
um, uh, another, what I tend to do, because I used to go through an awful lot. I, I would go through my, whether it was lacquer or acrylic or whatever I put on top. Um, if I did anything on the outside, even sanding, I would go right through it. What I figured out for myself, I need to let it sit a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, this particular plate I'm working on has been sitting with lacquer on it. Um, the last lacquer I put on it was Saturday morning. And I've not touched it since. Two days. So it's had two days, basically, yep. to, to harden. And now, um, Axe doesn't make a, an ultra fine, or I would use it probably. Um, mm. And I, would, I was just, I just finished my last, well, I started slow. Started at like 230 RPMs. Uh, I did work up after I felt like the paste had done it's what it's going to do. I did mm -hmm. work it on up uh, at, to a thousand, and uh, but at, when I had a thousand, I was just making sure my paper towel was coming off clean, and uh, it it all it did was to smooth off that lacquer. The other issue is putting enough lacquer on. Uh, this piece has I think twelve coats, so it's it's a uh, it's not globbed on by any means. When I say 12 coats, those are light, real light. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Almost, almost a dusting. Even if the, the last coat, I guess, was a little heavier, but it still had that dusting look to it. Mm. This is looking really well now, Paul. Great, what are you ragging? Will it stay on the inside? Wait, what, are you up to 400 there, are you? Yeah, 400. That's know. up to you. See... Have you got any methylated spirits? Yep. Give it a coat of methylated spirits to see what the grain looks like. Wow. I don't think it needs anything. Just That's going to be nice. I think it's kind of the, the natural yeah. the wood in there looks absolutely stunning. I don't really yeah. think you need anything, Paul. I, I, I agree. I would just put a wee taster. Just let that uh, methylate spirits flash off now. And it'll be. I flash off and we taste the sand sealer and yep. knock it back. Mm -hmm. So some of the glue just come over the the outside where that crack is. So Doug Mungham says he, uh, he made some pens from Holm Oak. H-O-L-M, Holm Okay. Yeah. And he came yeah. out great, he says. Good job. Yeah, according Gary, to the wood well, database, it's related to Holly, so. What, Ma deal. what Magnolia? The home, Holland, the home oak is related oak. to Holly, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gary Glass says, it looks tickety-boo to me, Paul. Doesn't he need a stain? That nope. was uh, That was a good Scottish now. Tickety boo. <laughs> That's a new one on me. Tickety boo. Yeah. Just a wee smidgen. Aye. I know wee smidgen. That's that's not a problem. I got that one. Oh, Tickety boo. Chris, really Chris neat. Is in. Really cool. Yep. yep. Hey Bailey. Chris is in from Bailey's Woodworks. You you must have gotten to work and and uh, got your computer on. <laughs> all right so that's cleaned the outside of that up Good. and the glue just came up on the surface all right have you got much more of this paul magnolia what have you got much uh, more of it yeah i've got a few bits good man leave leave it a while longer let's see see what that uh spalting make any more progress because it really looks nice on that angry well as he says my usual coat is uh three coats applied about half an hour oh right okay uh let's set for at least 24 hours then sand back to 400 i like to do at least nine coats usually more Right, okay, yeah. Wesley. So here's here's mine. I, I do I, I use Halfer's lacquer because it dries in about fifteen minutes. And I do I usually do three coats 
leave it for 24 hours, do a further three coats, leave it for 24 hours, and then leave, once I've sanded it, they sanded it back to 400 grit on the last occasion, leave it for two days for the lacquer to cure. Once the lacquer is properly cured, um, you can then use your abrasives on it. And the abrasives I use, normally use, as, as I said, 400 grit, uh, um, Yorkshire grit, and then I would use a um, Halford's, what is it called? Oh, I forgot what you call it. It's like a uh, scratch remover. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, tea cut. Tea cut. It's, it's like tea cut. It's, it's tea cut scratch remover, uh, because it's a way. Of, it, it's a way up in the thousands of grit. I use that, and then uh, after that, it would just be like Hampshire sheen on the top. That's how I do. It. You've got to let it cure right, Wesley. That's the that's the issue. It's got yeah. to be hard and cured before you start um, spinning it up again with tea cutters exactly right. Yeah. Takes... I think I've froze, guys. Have I? No. No, no. You're still working. Uh, my screens are not working. Well, huh. you're live here. You're still live. I can yeah. see you. That's, that's, that's okay. You mean. I don't know what's going on there. <clears throat> Malcolm Douglas has got a goat by Douglas. Catch you later. Hi, uh, Douglas. Or Malcolm, should say. Or Malcolm, Malcolm yes. I saw it at the same time you oh. said it. I'm mm. back. I'm still there. Oh. I'm still there here. <laughs> Pete, Pete's Jacob Chuck is out now. It's cooled down. Good man, Pete. Right. Well, just Pete, we taste the Yorkshire grit right in the inside of that. Uh, yeah, Pete has me intrigued now. A three inch hole drilled nine inches deep. I want to know what is what is that. My word. Three inch hole nine inches deep. That's gonna be a big vase. I'm thinking it. <laughs> so either that's the start of a huge hollow form. Yeah. I did see he was gonna make some big hollow forms. Yeah, I was just going to say, just be careful. Oh. It doesn't really need an awful lot of uh, anything. It's quite good. So the trick when using Yorkshire grip when you've got an occlusion there is to blow it out with an airline when you're finished. Mm-hmm. Or it will go or it will go white. It surely will. <laughs> Chris Chris just says, I've been working for two hours before I remembered to check for live streams. Work is a huge discretion to my hobby. <laughs> uh, how well I understand. I know the feeling. Even though I'm retired now. But I know the feeling. Do, 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 do. Uh, I show my poor car still sick. <laughs> I know. Hopefully fixed tomorrow, Paul. Is that what you said? Hopefully, yeah. Fingers crossed, he's had, Fingers crossed. He's had it a fortnight now. Uh, trying to get a part, trying to get a part for it. Yeah, it's a Pete very says, yeah. Uh, interesting problem it has. Uh, I tell you what had happened. I was, uh, I was away on a holiday and and I was down next uh, Carnlock and we cottage and the girl that runs the place knocked the, the door and says, "Your lights are on." hazard lights so i went out and knocked them off as you do in the wee button i thought i i hit it when i on the way out with my phone and didn't see it so that was okay i was i went off and got no more off it so I came home a couple of days later in bed and the doors knocking at uh, half one and uh, next door neighbor saying 
all your plates are gone. Uh, so I went out. Could I get them off? No, I wouldn't go off. Mm. And I haven't went off since it. My goodness. I've been, I've been driving around with hazard lights on for near a week. Just up and down the road, just to the shop. I wouldn't go anywhere far on it. Uh, right. So apparently there's a couple uh, videos on uh, YouTube with similar cases, but nobody seems to have an answer. Hmm. You know, really to the problem. So he reckons it's my ECU or UCP or whatever it is, the actual control uh, module C for the C CPU central central processing unit, maybe. Yeah, for the car, because he replaced everything else and it wasn't any of those. So oh. he he's been searching the internet and breaking his charge for a, a spare one. So. Hopefully, he got the part on Friday, so hopefully I'll get it in. But he has to recode the whole car again, you know, reprogram it. Right. Basically, the answer, he says, take a bulb date. Problem solved. I... <laughs> that sounds but like a Kentucky thing. <laughs> you, still have a, you still have a problem, Pete, there, because the, the noise will be ticking away on the inside, and it'll run yeah. your battery flat, you know. Do your head, it would do your head in, too. So the only way I was able to leave, leave it overnight outside my house was to take uh, disconnect the battery. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, but it's the EC ECU says Chris, engine ECU. control unit. Yeah. Engine control unit. There you go. Engine control unit. That's shows you much. I know it It's still a computer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it needs all reprogrammed, the keys and everything. So mm, that's why costly. It's uh, well, it's cheaper than getting a, uh, a brand new one from Ronald. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Pete's, I think Pete's I, has, it could probably be a factory fitted alarm gone wrong. Well, he disconnected the alarm, took the alarm out, so he did. Okay. So he, he's way. what he's covered all those things, you know, with all their operate, obvious things, you know. But mm. uh, uh, that's the first thing he done. Is thinking because uh, the alarm's uh, connected to your your indicators. Because if the alarm goes off, your flashers go off. You know, so That's good idea. he thought down that line too. So Douglas, Douglas has just said, <laughs> "Paul, does that washing up liquid give you give the wood a good shine?" Mix the hands <laughs> nice and soft. <laughs> so it does. Sanding <laughs> <laughs> so, sealer in the fairy liquid bowl. Yep. Perfect. Just a wee taste of milk crystalline wax in the inside of that. <laughs> so I'm not holding hope, um, hopes too high for to get the car back tomorrow, you know. What what, uh, what car is it? Renault. Ronald, Ronald McGann. McGann, yeah. Nice enough yeah. That's, All right, Chris well, Dawson it's, says it's bedtime. He's going to bed, so we'll see you later. Hey, Chris, Chris. Have a good night. All right, Chris. Thanks for coming in. On the outside again. I want to go with all a nice boat. Ah. Do 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 do. <laughs> so it might be going to the scrapyard in the sky if we don't get it fixed. Indeed. <laughs> you know, I don't think I want to put too much money into it because no. I have the, had that I had that car for three years now. It wasn't right. a whole lot of money when I got it. It's it's fifteen year old. No, so yeah. it's it doesn't owe me anything, but That's I, I don't want to spend hundreds of pounds on it. You know, that, right. that'll be one of these Apple things. You know, built and sell by date. Yeah. Like Usually when they get start and getting old, it's a money box after that. It's this sure, goes yeah. and that goes, you know. It's that's what happens, buddy. But you take a chance and you buy something that's probably going to last Gary's you for a couple been, of years. And Gary's been back from work for two weeks now, and he still hasn't a chance to fire up a lathe. Come on, Gary. Some, get in that shed, you boy. You're not having to draw symptoms. I'm sure he is. He must be. He must be itching to get the feet out the door. Oh, goodness. 
Now, you could have been standing at your lathe watching this, Gary Glass. Absolutely. Right, that needs to dry off a wee bit, but that's a, that was a wee project for the day. It's not what I wanted to do, but when I've seen this bit of wood sitting, uh, where are Turned we? Turned out really nice, I'll have to tell you. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, don't be throwing it away. Even though you're, he's throwing oh, it across the shop, but. And there's, <laughs> there's a camera away. Oh, oh, come on, camera. Come on, camera. He broke it again. Uh, Got to pay the ah, chipmunks. There you are. So that's it. Uh, I'll take a wee food off later. Uh, let that dry. I'll maybe give it an hour coat of uh, wax inside. You know, it's a nice wee bowl, natural yes. edge, inclusion. And you can see, uh, oh, see got away with later. it. You know, you can see the daily through it okay. You know, but it'll be Good interesting job, to see if it oh. moves anymore, you know. Uh, I'll just bring you guys in before we say cheerio. Uh, there they are. Reese and Tucson. Oh, Gary says Tucson. he had he had his Gary's had his parents over, and he he didn't think his old mother would take kindly to me leaving her sitting while I was while I was making sawdust. <laughs> yeah. She'd probably be glad to see the back of you, Gary Glass. I know, rightly. There's so, there's that plate I was working there you go. on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got a little chatoyance in it. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Wait, what what red is that? Is that the ruby? Um, no, flame. that's flame actually. Flame, right. black, sanded back, flame, and honey. Very nice. Yep. Good job. So, I take it this is a piece of muckle. <laughs> magnolia. You say it's magnolia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hundred yes. percent magnolia. Yeah. Okay, so it's magnolia. Yeah. Nice to be live edge. Actually, edge have a live edge one here. And uh, there, there's a piece of my uh -huh. there, there's, there's a piece I roughed on, Paul. There's a magnolia I roughed on. Yep. Yep. Yeah, something similar, isn't it? Well, it's identical. Yep. Anyway, guys, yeah, no, thank you very much on. for coming in and joining me today in my shed. I really appreciate that. And, uh, uh, we'll say to you, I don't think uh, well, Brian's not on there because we have no, 360 no, Club meeting. 360 Club is right. If you're not a member of 360 Club, why not? It's only five, <laughs> quid, a, five quid a month. It's an excellent club. Yeah. yeah. You, what can you buy for five quid a month that's, these days? That's cheap enough. Uh, and you get X and, and uh, Martin was a demo every month as well, which you don't have to pay for. Um, and then Martin will, on occasions, throw in an extra little demo, and sometimes Les Thorn throws in a demo as well. So it's well worth the effort and uh, to join and come along and join us first Monday in the month, and the third Monday in the month. Hey, well, that's enough promotion for I'm sure <laughs> Okay, guys. Say <laughs> to you. All right. All right. All right. All right, Paul. Good to be with y'all. All right, guys. Bye, Bye everybody. See you again. Bye. Catch you all Bye. later. Bye.